Hello. So, just thought I would uh, film a little update today on the, the battery pack in my Nissan uh, ENV200. Upgraded the battery pack on this vehicle from the 24 kilowatt hour battery pack it had originally to a 40 kilowatt hour battery pack. Um, I'll link the video down, down below. So one little issue we're having with the battery upgrade is that the van is communicating the incorrect state of charge to the charge point. So currently here, the van is showing, if you from the dashboard, 69%, but charging is just finished. Well, it's been four stop because the, um, the charger thinks the van is at 100%. Um, if you look at the screenshot here, you can see it showing 100% state of charge. So yeah, the charge point is getting the incorrect state of charge from the vehicle. This only affects some rapid chargers. Other rapid chargers, which I've tried, keep charging as long as the vehicle takes current. You know, it's good to solve this, but even at 69%, we've still got over 100 miles of range, which is like way more range than we would be on 100% on the existing battery. So actually, uh, you know, we can still, you know, we're not, it's not like we can get stranded anywhere. Um, but it would obviously be good to sort this, but we can choose to use chargers that don't have this issue. What's happening here is the, uh, the, the rapid chargers are not receiving the correct uh, metrics from the vehicle, the correct state of charge or the correct capacity remaining, you know, from the vehicle. And that's why they are incorrectly displaying the, um, uh, you know, the, the state of charge, which is causing them to stop prematurely. And one of the things we did during the upgrade was uh, fit a, a little device called a CAN bridge. Um, it basically like uh, translated the uh, information coming from the new battery pack. The other thing the, which the CAN bridge uh, should have done was communicate the correct battery information to uh, rapid charging stations. So with, with a bit of investigation, with the help from Dalla, so it turns out that where I installed the CAN bridge, um, which is just as the EV CAN lines enter the VCM, the communication wires going to the battery are called the EV, EV CAN lines. There's two of these, EV CAN high and EV CAN low. These wires run from the battery pack um, along underneath the vehicle up into the engine bay and then um, through the firewall and into the VCM which is located in the passenger footwell and the VCM is what controls you know basically everything on the vehicle um, and so that's where I installed the can bridge I intercepted these EV can lines just before they go into the VCM and that's where I installed the can bridge as you saw in the, uh, the other video however it turns out that the EV can lines actually split under the bonnet and in, in the engine bay and uh, go to the, the PDM, the power distribution module, and then, and, then, and then split to come to the VCM. So what's happening is the power distribution module, which is like the, um, the top block on the uh, Nissan you know, engine stack, that's where <coughs> houses the, uh, the control electronics, which speaks to the rapid charger, rapid charging units. Um, you know, via on the Chadabo um, canvas. So what I believe is happening is, or what Dawa and I believe is happening is, is that the PDM is getting the raw battery signals from the from the battery pack without going through the can bridge, which is causing the rapid chargers to display the inc incorrect percentage. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to move the can bridge, I'm going to move it and splice it in just uh, as the EV can wires come out of the battery pack so we can be sure that any signals sent to any module in the vehicle um, are getting the, um, like I suppose, the spoofed data coming from the can bridge or the, or the corrected data, <laughs> depending on which way you look at it, um, coming from the, the can bridge. So to do this, um, unfortunately, there's no way to access these wires anywhere apart from underneath the vehicle. So I'm going to have to jack the van up get underneath, remove the, remove the plastic trays and intercept the wires there. Uh, I'm not too keen to fit the cam bridge externally to the vehicle because it's a bit of electronics that isn't, uh, you know, isn't waterproof or anything. So I'm going to keep the cam bridge installed inside the van. I'm just going to run a four quart twisted pair cable uh, with cam lines, you know, cam lines in versus cam lines out from underneath the vehicle all the way along up into the engine bay to the firewall to my cam bridge. So I'm going to keep the cam bridge in the same physical location. I'm just going to run this cable uh, to intercept the can lines kind of earlier in their journey, as it were. 
So yeah, wish me luck. Hope this goes well. And uh, fingers crossed that this should fix this issue. Okay, so we've got the van up on, on some ramps here. Got the 12 volt disconnected. And removed the under, one of the under trays under here. So now we have access to the, um, you know, the two high voltage connectors. Um, this one's for the PTC heater, and this one's the, for the main uh, inverter traction motor. And this here is where I'm going to tap in to the EV can lines. This just unscrews like that, half a turn, up it comes. So I'll just do some testing here to make sure I get the two correct wires, and uh, then we'll strip some of this trunking back and uh, yeah, intercept these two EV CAN lines here. The two wires that I need to, uh, the EV CAN wires, are the blue and the green wires that are next to each other on the bottom left hand side of the frame now. So I'm going to intercept them and um, connect them to, this is the this is the cable here that I have rooted up and into the passenger footwell where the CAN bridge is located. So we're going to have you know, if you can um, in and then if you can out, then this is going to be um, it spliced in there in line in the EV can wires. Warranty void for the second time. There we go, all the soldering work is done there. Okay, I'm just going to tidy this up, um, put another layer of heat shrink over it, um, put the, all this um, trunking all back together, tie it up, plug it up, um, zip tie this up there, and then we'll be uh, ready to go and test it. So the double twisted pair cable I've ran, you can see it coming up there, still need to zip tie it up and then through there into the firewall. And then out it comes here. So we just need to finish the wiring um, to connect the, the can bridge, which is here, um, into here. This is where the can bridge was wired in previously, um, into the VCM there. So I'll be moving these connections over to, over to this one here. Okay, just our local rapid charger, and this is a unit which was affected by the incorrect state of charge issue. So we're currently at 50, 55%. Let's see what it's showing on the display. And it's showing 54%. Fantastic. So this looks like it's fixed the issue. So with the Cambridge in the new location, the, state, the rapid charger is now showing the correct state of charge. So we'll just keep keep charging now uh, until we get to 67% was the magic number that it used to get to before. And we'll see if it charges further than, th than that. And if the two um, state of charge of the charger and the display keep on matching as the charge continues, but looking good so far. Okay, we've now reached 67% here in the van. So this is the point where Previously, it would stop because the rapid charger was displaying 100%. Let's see what it's displaying now. 66%. Pretty much spot on. Fantastic. Problem solved. Nice work, Della. That's fantastic. So that means for all rapid chargers now, we'll be able to charge to 100%. Super happy. So in my previous video, I mentioned that it is possible to do a battery upgrade without using a can bridge and pair the, pair the battery with the vehicle without a can bridge. Um, however, if you do that, you will have this uh, same problem that I was experiencing where some, char some rapid chargers will stop charging prematurely. A reason why you would want to use um, a can bridge as well as fixing the, um, 
in backboard display. So for that reason, I'd recommend anyone doing a battery upgrade to, um, to use the Canbridge device. Um, yeah, it'll um, fix those little, those little niggling issues and install the Canbridge in the correct location that I've got it located in now, um, which is as soon as the EV can lines come out the battery pack, they need to go into the Canbridge before um, any other modules are connected in the vehicle. Unfortunately, on the EMV200, that means uh, some, quite a bit more wiring work because the wires run externally uh, to the vehicle. Apparently on the Leaf, uh, well, I'm pretty sure on the Leaf that you can access the EV can wires as soon as they come out of the battery a lot easier because on the Leaf, the, the communication wire wiring comes straight out of the battery and then goes straight up into the floor of the vehicle. Um, so yeah, I think you can get that then. Val has done a couple of videos showing where they are on Leaf. So yeah, um, a can bridge is actually important for the upgrade, but I, th I still think it's worth pairing the battery using Leaf Buy because now if something does happen to the can bridge or it malfunctions or something, I can just rejoin the can wires and um, uh, the, the vehicle will still drive and function. It's not totally reliant on the can bridge to have the battery accepted by the vehicle.